Okay. Everyone say hi to Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Sorry you're not here. Okay, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation, okay? First, just about the words implicit versus explicit and how you understand them in English class and how you understand them now, right? So if I were to explicitly tell you that I am hungry right now, I would say, I am hungry. <coughs> If I were to implicitly tell you that I was hungry, what would I say? My tummy's grumbling. My tummy's grumbling. I heard Hutch was good. I heard Hutch was good. <laughs> Man, it's almost noon. Mm. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Wow, that apple looks good. Right? Those are the kind of things that I would say if I was implicitly telling you that I was hungry. Right? I was going to make, you would have to do a little work, maybe a little inferring to, to figure out that I was hungry. And that's what I was trying to say. Explicitly, I would just say, I'm hungry. I want some food. Uh, same thing kind of goes for, for math. All the equations that we have dealt with so far when we're finding the derivative have been defined explicitly. Y in terms of x. Y equals 3x squared minus 5, right? That's an explicit form. Um, it is really easy. If I give you an x value, x equals 1, you can tell me very quickly what y equals, right? You would say y equals 3 times 1 minus 5. So y equals negative 2, right? That's easy. Um, implicit form, that means y is not defined explicitly. Y is defined implicitly. So if I ask you what y is when x is 1, you have to do maybe a little bit more work. You can't just plug in x, the value I give you, and out it pops y. You might have to do a little bit more algebra, just like you had to do a little bit more work to infer that I was hungry, right? So in this problem down here, if x is 1, then you'd say, okay, well then 1 plus y squared equals 25, so y squared is... 20, oops, 24, and y is plus or minus root 24, and then you simplify that, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's, there's just a little bit more going on there, a couple extra steps, if something's defined implicitly, okay? So I've given you a couple examples um, of implicit form functions. Now, taking the derivative is another story, right? So we've got um, y equals... 3x squared minus 5, right? Taking that derivative is easy. What's the derivative of that? Well, tell me, give me a full equation. What equals <coughs> plus 6? Y, y prime equals, so you would say y prime equals 6x or dy dx equals 6x, okay? I want you to be just as comfortable with this version, dy dx equals 6x, as you are with y prime, okay? I know you guys prefer y prime right now, but get comfortable with dy dx because it's going to be helpful um, to be good at that part too, okay? Charles, my leash. You're satchel. Okay. Um, okay, and, and we all agree that these two things mean the same thing. What about this one? What if I want to find the derivative here? What am I going to do? You have to move You're going to solve for y, right? You're going to make it be defined implicit, or explicitly. You're going to solve for y and say y equals 1 over x, which is the same as x, oops, x to the negative first power. And then you're going to say, well, then dy dx equals negative x to the negative second or negative 1 over x squared. So you're going to rewrite it so that you can take the derivative. So you're going to do it, you're still doing the derivative explicitly. Now, the third example gets a little trickier to solve for y, doesn't it? Right? You're going to have plus or minus square root, right, when you solve for y. That's going to be trickier. And then in the fourth example, x squared plus y cubed plus y equals 2, then it's going to be real tricky to solve for y. Right? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's impossible to solve for y. Or it's not impossible, but it would be really, 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 really hard for you to solve for y. Okay? 
Um, so we need, we need another way. We need to be able to take the derivative without solving for y. We need to be able to take the derivative when the function is not in explicit form, when it's in implicit form. And it turns out it's not, not that hard. Basically, you use your derivative rules, power product quotient, on every term with a function, but you must remember to use the chain rule on each. So, back here. When we have y equals 3x squared minus 5, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, okay? You don't realize it, but because you're so used to just writing dy dx equals or y prime equals, but you are taking the derivative of the left-hand side. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx or y prime, okay? The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx or y prime. So dy dx equals 3x. Okay, now think about what I've said has changed, right? Except for, technically speaking, we could apply the chain rule here. We could say 3x dx dx. That would be the derivative of x with respect to x. Okay? But that seems kind of redundant because dx dx, which is the derivative of x with respect to x, well, what's that equal to? That's 1, right? That's 1. So, we don't really generally write it. We just say dy dx equals 3x. But we could. And I could rewrite that equation implicitly. I could write, instead of y equals 3x squared plus 5, I could write y plus 5 equals 3x squared, right? And now it's defined implicitly instead of explicitly. And I could take the derivative just the same according to what I just said. I said, okay, take the derivative of each component, but apply the chain rule to everything. So, the derivative of y is 1 dy dx. Okay, dy dx is the derivative of y. dy dx is the derivative of y. That's what you need to know. So the derivative of y would be 1, right, because that's the leading coefficient, and then multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx. The derivative of 5 is 0. And then on the other side, the derivative of 3x squared would be 6x dx dx. Write it or don't write it, but that's equal to 1. Okay, so again, we're getting the same thing. But this technique is going to allow us to solve some of these more complicated ones. Okay? So let's go into the three examples that I have of implicit. Okay. So use all your derivative rules. Power, product, quotient. So here we're going to use which of those? Product. Product. We have x times y. Okay? So, yellow, blue. Okay? And here's it going to Here it's going to We're going to use the product rule. So, the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of x. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? 1 dx dx, right? 1 dx dx. Multiply that by y. Just y, because we're doing the product rule, right? The derivative of the first times the second. Plus the first times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of y? 1 dy dx. Do you have to write that? Yes, you do. And then on the other side, the derivative of 1 is 0. So... What we wanted to know was the derivative. That's dy dx, or y prime, right? So we're going to solve for y prime. So we have y plus x dy dx equals 0. That means x dy dx equals negative y, or dy dx, our derivative, is negative y over x. Okay? So we have an implicitly defined function, and we also, um, so we end up with our derivative here, dy dx equals negative y over x. Let's do another one. Okay. 
So we're going to use all our derivative rules. What is the negative 4? No, it's 